history is full of firsts. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Many of those firsts shaped our way of life. For 70 years, KPRC Channel 2 has been proud to be pioneers in shaping television and Houston history. Isn't it good to work for a place that has a sense of history? And indeed it is. See, taking the president from the spring to compensation. If you have something you'd like Channel 2 Investigates to check out, call the tip line at 713-223-TIPS or email investigates at click2houston.com. Channel 2 News begins right now with breaking news. Happening now at 6, a massive water main break, flooding cars, and trapping people in their homes. You're literally tossing Jose over the fence? Yes, I mean, because it's pretty high, so there was no way for me to give it to him, so I pretty much had to toss him through the gate. That break near a water plant that processes more than 40% of the city's water, impacting businesses and homes across the area tonight. The water pressure for the next several hours will continue to be low. So tonight, the mayor anticipating that many residents will need to boil their water for the next 24 hours. Hello and thank you for joining us this evening. I'm Dominique Soxa. And I'm Andy Sirota. That water main break also forcing businesses across the area to close early because of a lack of water. All HISD schools will be closed tomorrow. So will Harris County Courts. And it's even impacting hospitals tonight. Let's get a live look now at the impacted area from Sky 2. The water is receding, but it's still causing a major traffic issue tonight. Take a look at a lot of red on the map as people try to navigate that area. The Beltway also dismissing tolls on the east side to try and help the situation. We have a team of reporters covering this breaking story tonight. We begin with how all of this started. Channel 2's Bill Spencer live near that break with details. Bill. Andy, this is just a massive flooding event uh, with a torrent of water flooding into East Houston. It began about 1230 this afternoon as repair crews were working on a, on a major water pipeline, making a repair to a small leak. That pipeline suddenly ruptured, sending an ocean of water flooding onto 610, uh, covering the roadway. At the height of this flooding event, the 610 East looked more like a raging river than a freeway, with motorists actually stranded in their cars and many of the of these people watching the water rise up past their windows there is still a low water situation in a, a low water pressure situation here in East Houston, affecting many thousands and thousands of people. The mayor warning people that they need to boil their water. All of the people in Houston need to boil their water for the next 24 hours. Mayor Sylvester Turner pulling no punches, calling this a major water line break that he says city crews are working feverishly to repair. I can tell you that the uh, uh, that the line has been uh, isolated um, on both ends. So the line has been isolated on both ends. But until it fully drains, because it pulls water from all over, and so it, until it fully drains, it will continue to spew out water, although at a diminishing at a diminishing rate. Uh, we're going to be doing everything we can and working even with tech stock.
uh, in order to pump up that water. There were some uh, vehicles trapped on, on the loop, about 12 to 15 vehicles, uh, and our firefighters were able to pluck out about three people from that from that area. Um, so again, we have you know units out there. We have high water vehicles. We have boats uh, ready uh, uh, to deploy. As you can see live right now, the water has uh, diminished greatly on the 610. In fact, uh, the pay pavement is simply wet right now. Crews now working to clean up this freeway. They have no estimate of time as to when they're going to reopen the 610. They have to do a lot of work here, uh, clean up all this sludge. There's one of the cleaning machines right now, uh, brushing up the sludge, uh, collecting the sludge and the mud and all the debris down there in the freeway. Uh, they're also going to have to test for the safety of this roadway before they open it back up. Reporting live, Bill Spencer, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Big cleanup ahead for sure, Bill. Thanks so much. Tonight, we know that water main is eight feet wide. That's pretty large. Mm -hmm. Here's a look at the scale we're talking about. This graphic shows you the scale of an eight foot water main and a man who stands at six feet tall. While we haven't received an amount of water lost in this break from the city of Houston just yet, the amount of flooding left behind is an indication that we are talking about massive amounts of water here. And this rising water caught drivers and neighborhood residents by surprise. The Houston Fire Department had to rescue three people from their cars that were flooded out and some were trapped in their homes, left to watch the water rise after getting no assistance from the city. Channel 2's Joel Eisenbaum live in East Houston tonight with their story. Joel. Andy, I cannot emphasize, by the way, how bad it is trying to get from point A to point B in the city of Houston on the east side. We are on McCarty. This is right now live, and there's a half mile of traffic trying to transition onto Clinton Drive, which is sporadically closed. These cars and trucks and 18-wheelers have been sitting here for the better part of an hour already, not moving at all. Of course, a lot worse for a lot of other commuters today. Just incredible video, I think, really, on 610 near Clinton when we saw all that water. I mean, can you imagine there's not a drop of rain out? You are driving and all of a sudden you are in a flood. A dozen cars and trucks were lost in this thing. HFD had to do three high water rescues with one of those big, big high water rescue vehicles. Everybody okay there, but that's not it. We're not just talking about cars and trucks. This threatened homes. There were people along Clinton Drive in that area on the east side who were trapped in their houses. I spoke to a woman just a few hours ago who was so worried looking out of her front door because she was with her one-year-old child alone trying to figure out how she was going to negotiate her way out of her house. She really thought the water was going to come into her home. So what she did was call 911 for help, but trouble with 911. They transferred me to another line. I believe it was at 311, and they uh, told me that the lines were down. I was in line for like five minutes. Nobody answered, so I had to hang up. And my sister actually called, and they told her that it was not an emergency. So my sister was like, what do you mean it's not an emergency? She's trapped, it, trapped inside her house. Yeah, so eventually, how's this woman got help for her and her child, and she had to literally toss her child over her fence in her backyard. It was her brother-in-law who managed to whittle his way through the neighborhoods and pick them both up. They're both all right tonight, and there was no water in their homes. I talked to her just a little bit ago. But this nightmare is not over for a lot of people. A lot of people trying to get to work, trying to get home. So many closed streets, including McCarty, right here at Clinton as they try to shuffle, and we've got a lot of trains Planes, trains, automobiles, everything out here, not much of it moving at all. We're live on the east side tonight. I'm Joel Eisenbaum, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Boy, frightening and frustrating for some, Joel. Thank you. So what happens if your home or car was damaged by the water from today's water main break? We found the answers for you. If your home or your property is damaged by this incident, the damage is covered by your personal flood insurance, not your homeowner's insurance. If your car is damaged, your car insurance should cover the damage here. That water main break has left people without water or very low water pressure all over town. In fact, Mayor Turner saying he anticipates a boil water notice for the next 24 hours. Channel 2's Marianne Martinez is in Montrose tonight where businesses are closing up early. Marianne. 
Well, Andy, this Kroger here on Montrose near Westheimer is almost officially out of water. All of the bottled still water is gone. Just a little bit of sparkling bottled water is left. And that's because people in this neighborhood have been without water or, as you said, with very low water pressure for hours. And so the shelves are picked over. A water main break miles away from Upper Kirby brought this Whole Foods to a standstill. Disappointed customers walked away after reading signs saying the store would be closed for the rest of the day. In Montrose, the water went out completely or ran with very little pressure for hours. The University of St. Thomas canceled classes for the rest of the day, meaning an early release for students. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, it's like 8 o'clock because I have a 7 o'clock class. After the city issued a boil water notice, many residents decided to stock up on water. By the time Luana Jones got to Kroger on Montrose Boulevard, the shelves looked like this. Apparently there had already been a run on the water because our water pressure has been real low for a few hours. Um, and they were trying their best to restock it, but by the time I went and bought a couple of groceries and came back to get more water, it was gone. The water outage meant the inability to flush toilets or wash hands. The city ordered restaurants without water to close down. Montrose Cheese and Wine Shop stopped serving food immediately, but was able to keep selling bottles of wine for thirsty customers. June, and as you were telling me, your wine shop is still open, so yeah. if people don't have water, they can... They can drink wine, yes. Now, Kroger telling us they will be restocking the shelves around 6 p.m., so any second uh, there should be more water back on the shelves. They had 14 locations that were impacted by this event. Now, also an update on University of St. Thomas. They have now added tomorrow on the list of closures. No classes for University of St. Thomas as well. Reporting live from Montrose, Marianne Martinez, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Thank you, Marianne. Montrose, just one part of town feeling the effects from all of this. Channel 2's Bill Barajas live in Third Ward tonight with more on the impact there. Bill? Well, we got good news. Things seem to be getting better here. When we first arrived in this third ward neighborhood, everyone seemed to be complaining about low water pressure. The elementary school here had to shut down some of their after school programs, and residents were even trying to make plans to stay with family members because the problem was so bad. But at least one resident showed us that things seemed to be improving. The water pressure was low, and I started to call the water department. And then I saw some texts on uh, Facebook, so I noticed it was a problem. And then you came here to check mm -hmm. for yourself, to see for yourself. Right, right. So it looks like now it's better than it was before, mm -hmm. but at first we were looking at something similar to, similar to something like that. Willie Brooks says the issue started at about noon today. She and her neighbors coming home to find that there was little to no water coming out of their faucets or toilets. The issue also affecting universities. TSU and the University of Houston are both canceling classes for the remainder of the day. The University of Houston even providing some of their students with water, according to a tweet. Residents here on Sawyer and Wichita on Third Ward telling me they're hoping things continue to get better, but are still in shock that they were even affected. I was surprised that from that area, from 610 to by the shift channel, I guess, somewhere in that area, it was amazing that it affected us. And residents say they will continue to monitor the situation here, but things seem to be getting better. Live in Third Ward, Bill Barajas, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Thank you, Bill. Of course, there was concern that the water situation could impact the first night of the cook-off at the Houston Rodeo, but the grilling is going on as planned tonight. That's right. Channel 2's Hannah McKenzie joining us now live from the cook-off with an update. Hannah. Hey there, good evening. Yeah, gates open just over an hour ago and things are in full swing here at the cook-off. Take a look at this. Teams already hard at work hoping to take that top spot in their designated categories. And my, does it all look good. The low water pressure, not an issue here right now, but pitmaster Grant Pinkerton says it could be a different story tomorrow. If we can't get water in tonight, uh, tomorrow could be could be a real rodeo. What do you use the water for? Uh, you know, cleaning, wa washing dishes. Uh, we have uh, auto air conditioned trailer with uh, bathrooms in it that have running water, so uh, that needs a big tank and needs to get refilled. So hopefully that can get done tonight. 
most of these teams plan on feeding around 600 mouths, so they better be prepared. And most of them, though, are pretty self-sufficient. They all bring these huge tanks of water. I'm told this team has about 550 gallons, so they shouldn't be running out anytime soon. But again, if these don't get filled up throughout the weekend, that's when they could run into some problems. Reporting live at Energy Park, Hannah McKenzie, KPRC Channel 2 News. All right, Hannah, thanks so much. Coverage of this still breaking story continues on our website this evening. That includes a list of closures. Just head to clicktohouston.com and look for updates on our homepage. All right, rodeo is in town. It is definitely a duster evening, so grab a jacket as you head out. It's going to be a little cool, but I tell you what, happy trails for Friday. Just a perfect day, especially at Memorial Park. And the parade on Saturday, couldn't ask for better. Your forecast straight ahead, Randy. All right, Frank, some of the best college baseball programs are in Houston for this weekend. Shriners Classic over at Minute Maid Park. Why being here is key to preparing for a big regional and World Series run later this spring. Reaction ahead sports. Plus, FBI raid. Why the federal agency was at HISD headquarters today and how it's connected to a home raided by another agency this morning. That's next on Channel 2 News at 6. Now to a developing story we've been following since this morning. FBI agents raid Houston ISD headquarters. This at the same time, IRS agents show up at the home of the district's chief operating officer. Channel 2's Robert Arnold is following the story for us and is joining us now with what he's learned. Robert. Not unexpectedly, FBI agents were tight-lipped about the exact nature of their operation. However, one state senator is talking, and he says he suspects today's actions are tied to last year's scathing report from the Texas Education Agency. No doubt that has attracted the attention of the federal government. State Senator Paul Betancourt certainly is not shy in stating he believes the Houston Independent School District has fallen into a state of dysfunction. It's not what happens in the teacher with the classroom. Uh, it's what's happening in the leadership. HISD's embattled image didn't get any help Thursday as agents from the FBI and IRS carted away boxes of evidence from the district's headquarters. Our sources say federal agents focus their efforts on the third floor. That's home to the executive offices. In tandem with this investigation, IRS agents were seen at the home of HISD's chief operating officer, Brian Busby. This is all bad signs. The signs have been bad. They're going to continue to be bad until this leadership is changed. This investigation follows calls for a state takeover of HISD. The TEA accused the district of several improprieties, including the unlawful awarding of contracts going as far back as 2013. The fact of the matter is, is that Houston deserves better. HISD officials would not comment exactly on what the FBI was looking for today, only to say that the district is fully cooperating with the federal agencies involved in this investigation and that there is no danger to students or faculty. Reporting live from HISD headquarters in Northwest Houston, Robert Arnold, KPRC Channel 2 News. All right, Robert, thanks so much. Could yeah. not have been a more beautiful day out there. Yeah, horrible for what happened. I with know. The but, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't cold terribly, and it wasn't windy, and it yeah. wasn't raining. Yeah. So at least we with everything else, we had a nice day, right? True. Some of these folks found it just ducky out there and peaceful, <laughs> right? <laughs> out in Katy, very nice shot there. It just feels like the weekend coming. Lows this morning, it was cold. 26 in Conroe, 32 in Katy, 30 in Sugarland, 32 in Bush. I think we can wave goodbye to winter. I don't have much of that left, but it certainly started that way. Made it to 61, 60, 55 this afternoon. Right now, we're generally in the 50s. Here's a look, southwest Houston at 55, west-southwest wind at five miles an hour down on the island. They're bundled up, so it's a little cool down there at 51. South winds at 9. Most of us have a nice west wind. So mid and upper 50s, just about everywhere you look. It's going to start to go pretty quickly down into the 50s and 40s, though, because the, the air is so dry. Humidity, 21% in Wharton, 28, 37, 26 in Pearland, 31 in Conroe. So like the desert, once that sun goes down, it really cools down quickly. A little west wind, but that's it. So by 7, look for mid 50s to low 50s, 51, 53, 50. And as we go overnight, temperatures fall to about 40. Some upper 30s, some low 40s, but right about 40. Make it easy to remember. For tomorrow, 70, maybe to 72 in spots. And then on Saturday, we have another fairly warm day, 46 to start, so it's cool. But by the time we get to the afternoon, we're at 75. So some nice afternoons after a 
cool start or two. Rodeo Parade on Saturday, 54 at 8, 60 at 10, and 70 at noon. So some nice parade weather. Showers way off to our north. We're clear. High pressure's in control. It'll continue to be in control this weekend. And notice this south wind that starts. So that's what warms us up for Saturday and Sunday. Even into Monday, there's this front that's going to start moving our way. But that's not until next week. And it really gets here on Tuesday. So Tuesday is the day to watch for any rain. Other than that, maybe on either side, a little sprinkle. But right now, it's Tuesday for the timing. So we'll keep an eye on that. Power planner is clear for tonight. Right through the 40s to an overnight low. Upper 30s to 40. Pretty perfect for tonight's hair cast. And really, for tomorrow as well. High temperature tomorrow right at 70. Maybe a little warmer in spots. 76 for Saturday. Dynamo and Sabercats are playing. 20, 40, 20. So Tuesday here is the front. And then sunshine for Thursday, Friday. And then the next weekend is that weekend when we all lose an hour of sleep one way or another. But your yeah. clocks go forward at least an hour. But we get the sunshine back at least in the late afternoon and evening. So it's, that's it's, good. It's worth an hour loss. Absolutely. Yeah. Sunshine and see you later, winter. That's right. Yes. Okay, nice. Randy joining us now, latest on the Stros. Yeah, playing uh, tonight, uh, early spring schedule, Astros and Nationals taking one step closer to the regular yeah. season. Uh, under the lights tonight, we'll show you some early highlights from West Palm. Meanwhile, uh, here in Houston, a stacked field in town for the annual Shriners Hospital Classic. What it means to face this great competition early in the year. And uh, he's not a headline grabber, but James Butler fitting right in with the Houston Roughnecks. His story, straight ahead. Should you all right, welcome to the Xfinity Sports Test tonight. Baseball out in West Palm Beach tonight. Astros and Nationals under the lights. Of course, the rematch in the World Series. Astros facing a Nats co-ace Max Scherzer tonight. And as we go to the highlights, top of the first inning, they get a couple runs off the Nationals' right-hander. Garrett Stubbs, he's been hitting the ball well early in these games. That one drops in right field, made it 2-0. Right now, 2-2. They're playing in the fourth inning. All right, big weekend of college baseball here in town as Minute Maid Park plays host once again to the Striners Hospital college classic 16 field is stacked it's headlined by lsu texas and the baylor bears all the teams squeezing in workouts all afternoon into the evening before the action ramps up tomorrow with three games each day texas head coach david pierce happy to have his undefeated longhorns in this field I just thought it was real important that we got back to this area, this region. Uh, we've got a lot more kids from the Houston area, and it's great for our fan base because we have so many alumni here. So I think it's a critical weekend for us. All right, the Roughnecks are the talk of the XFL. Quarterback P.J. Walker is getting all the headlines, but his running back also has a big role. Ari Alexander has the story. Roughnecks running back James Butler did not start the season as the number one guy. Me being, you know, the third back and helping the other guys, you know, with their reads, like off the field, then that's going to be my role. But between injuries and his own strong play, he's now the team's leading rusher and getting plenty of praise from his coach. Pound for pound, he's about as strong and tough a runner and blocker that I've, I've had. He's a legitimate uh, uh, player. I think he'll get a shot to go to the next level, too. About those NFL opportunities, he's had those before, but honestly, it sounds exhausting. So I had tried out for the Raiders, the training camp, got cut, brought back to the practice squad, did that for like probably from like week eight to the end of the season. The draft came, got let go again, got brought back during training camp, got cut again, and then they brought me back for practice squad, got cut again after the season. I had like a little workout with the Packers, and then that's when I, I came up here. Up here is where he's one of the league's best backs. With the Roughnecks, Ari Alexander, KPRC Channel 2 Sports. Man, I tell you what, he's had a lot of stops along the yeah, way, but yeah, I think he's found a home with the Roughnecks. Only undefeated team in the XFL, and they're playing yep. their new rivals, uh, Dallas Renegades, that Houston-Dallas thing this weekend. Oh, uh, there it goes again. <laughs> Why not? Let's just, let's just start it, right? Right. Should be good. Mm -hmm. And we'll be right back. Chevrolet. Good night for the cook-off. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, the rodeo and the trail rides, they really came off without a hitch pretty much. Mm -hmm. Really lucky this year. Yeah, or with a hitch or two, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. uh, but it, it really was lucky. It's a nice one. So I know they're starting to gather at the park tomorrow, so it will be nice. In fact, if they're out and about right now watching us, you've got a great one coming up. Here's your outdoor dining forecast, and I know you dine well. 54, 50, and 46. A little cool, but that's expected. And then we're looking for 70 tomorrow, 76 on Saturday, 78 Sunday, and 80 on Monday. Ooh, what a week. Weekend. Yeah, perfect. Nice. Amazing. Yep. So Thank much. you. Entertainment tonight's coming up next. We'll see you at 10.